we need lights. We need clear. Ah! <laughs> I hope that's the first thing that goes on the lights. <laughs> going, ah! ah! That was much brighter than I was expecting. Hello, internet. Hello. That what? Was Goodbye. What? <laughs> That what? Good ah, what? <laughs> what? I thought I paused it. Apparently not. China strike force. They really probably should give you like a, a way to get to your chat and stuff without having to go to the page as a channel operator. <laughs> like, like without having to go to your live stream. Yeah. So that you avoid exactly what I have to do every mm. episode. Hello, Bob. Just bang maniacally on the pause button. All day. All day. Every day. I don't want to work. Don't ever stop. I just want to bang maniacally on the pause button all day. So. So. Are you ready to make <sighs> podcast magic with the fellow people of the internet? Man, I should uh, I should load up the live stream on my uh, I would say personal computer, but it's a Macintosh computer. It's still it is a personal personal computer. computer. I guess it's a laptop. It's still personal. That's more personal because mm, that's like yeah. in your lap. Mm. I do get up close and personal with this. Yeah, until the battery runs out after about forty five minutes because it's five years old and. It's been put through some miles, man. Hmm. Miles. Like Davis. Yes. And to a, le and to a lesser degree, Teller. Mm. Much lesser degree. Much lesser degree. Hey, it's Steve like the bird. He sent us a voicemail. He did. I didn't listen to it yet. You, you're saving it for the show itself. I, yeah, I want to cry on camera. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't spoiled myself on anything. He actually used a quote I had been thinking about oh? saying at some point. Was it from Mein Kampf? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, good. It is decidedly not. Good. That's good. I have never read it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, doesn't stop people from quoting it. I'm pretty sure. Is the is the quote? If you see a Nazi, you should punch them. I don't think that was in that book. Oh, I mean, I think that's in uh, my my life, like mm. in English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Harlow's struggles. All right, I need to offset my blue with some orange. All right, yeah, I'm still like all geared up for what? What did we do? Mm. Something with blood or something? I don't know. I don't know why we went red. Blood fist. Blood fist. Yeah. It was blood, blood fist that's five. All... Blood fist V. That's why I went all red. Well, wait, that's not right. We need something different because we're the same color now. Yeah, that's better. Now it'll be Christmas over here. I'm going to continue to be whatever the camera has decided this color is. Uh, pur not real, not purplish. Really that's, I mean, that looks to be accurate in real life, too. It's almost purplish. Okay. Indigo? Sure. All right. Wendigo? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wendigo. <laughs> I need to add this movie to a list. That list is Bad Movie Fiends Podcast Films. China Strike Force? Right? I, I don't know what happened. Like, when did Vanilla Coke start becoming, like, totally prevalent? Like, it, it, for a while there, it was like, uh, they might have it. You know, 15 it like, years ago. It just seems like... Supply chain issues. Which just seems like it was like a, you know, you'd always have Cherry Coke for sure. But then, like, you know, the place may or may not have vanilla coke. And now it seems like every every time I go in, always vanilla coke. The people have spoken. I guess they have. And they have said it is vanilla coke. It's the finest of the flavors. It's pretty good. Yeah. I do like a good vanilla. I like vanilla root beer myself. Mm -hmm. That is mighty tasty. Yeah. But they don't bottle that and sell it at convenience stores. No. And it's a damn shame. You have to go find a freestyle machine. Mm. Work, work. Like, my name is Harlow, and I'm here to say, I like freestyle machines almost way. every day. There's something oh, about getting clean water to Africa or something. 
Yeah. Great job. Yeah. It's my freestyle. You're the best. Huh. Huh. Somebody gave Alien four and a half stars. I only four and a half stars. Have, not and have they been struck in the head? Clearly. Oh, it is letterbox, so you know. Were they dropped on their head as a child? I'm gonna go with yes. Which is also because if you go with less than five, it's like are you okay? Yeah, I mean I, I suppose being struck in the head and being dropped on your head are kind of the same thing. It's just yeah. whether you know, someone physically hit you in the head or gravity mm. did the job. One thing I appreciate about Blair is you know he's watched a movie because he will like 45 different reviews of it, of that movie. <laughs> and then you get them in your in your weird feed. Yeah, oh yeah, see? Yeah. Just just and it's interesting because it's like the gamut. It's like there's some one star reviews, there's some four star reviews. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think there's a lot more two star reviews. The man is looking for reviews. Much. He's he's getting in. He knows it. how to work letterboxed. Oh my god! It's I I just have to keep hitting load ac- older activity, and it's just Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. I haven't heard from Blair in a while. Yeah, I think he gave up on us. Ghostbusters. Well, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. What do you want? Uh, Chuck watched Roadhouse. Did anyone Roadhouse. else watch Roadhouse? New I've Roadhouse? seen Roadhouse. It stars one Patrick Swayze. Yeah. He rips a man's throat out. He does in a non-CG way. And they wondered if they okay. could get Ben Gazzara. And it turns out they could get <laughs> Ben Gazzara. <laughs> I know that joke. So, yes, I've seen Roadhouse. Man. Uh, Roadhouse. I mean, like, honestly, those were the fucking days, man. Where, like, any, like a movie like Roadhouse, they get a DVD and they're like, hey, Kevin Smith wants to do a commentary track. So let Kevin Smith do a commentary track for Roadhouse. Sure. Like, we don't get that shit anymore. No, we don't I, get commentary. We, we missed our window. We're lucky if, like, okay, we, we might not skip the credits mm-hmm. if there's a scene after, right. you know? Yeah, I, I man, when's the last time anyone's watched a movie with commentary? And don't answer. I know y'all freaks are different. I mean, like, most people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to say, a lot of people, when have they ever done it? Okay, true. Yeah. You know, uh, that are not freaks like us. All right, fine. I mean, I say, I freaks, say, the, I say freaks in the most loving way because, know. you know. The last I, yeah, one I, I did one. was. I'm allowed to say it. Yeah, the last one I did was Palm Springs, mm-hmm. and that was probably a good three years ago now. So wait, you bought that on disc? No, the, oh, there was a. Commentary on Hulu? Yeah, there's Hulu? a commentary on Hulu. Interesting. Yeah. If I saw that option for a movie that I'd seen a bunch, I'd do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've watched all the commentary tracks for Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just want to hear about the movie, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, I remember the first time I watched Boogie Nights. I'm like, okay, I don't care what time it is. I'm watching the commentary track for Boogie Nights mm-hmm. immediately after this. Yeah. And I probably started at 1230 at night and <laughs> went to sleep at 330. But, hey. Yeah. Could not tell you anything about that commentary track anymore because. Well, it's been like 15 years. <laughs> probably more than that. More than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you want a real number? Because it's, it's scary. What? 18 years. I mean, I no, that came out in 97. Seven, but, yeah. But I, I don't remember God. when I watched the. Oh, movie. okay. I was going to say, yeah. I, I remember just, it was. I remember uh, when it came out. So. It, was in, it was in the house on Wall Street. I can tell you that much. Because I didn't get to Boogie Nights right away. I watched it a little later. What? Wall Street money? Never Walsh. Oh. Well, my, that, the house that yeah, yeah, when yeah, I used no, to live I'm by you. With you. I just saw their movies. Yeah. I actually took an employee home the other day because his truck died. And uh, yeah, he's like right around the corner from Astral. I was like, hey, I used to be all around here all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm around there all the time now. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Very close. The very first studio. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, technically the second studio. The first studio was... Uh, we recorded one episode there. The very first episode. And it didn't even count house. because we forgot to hit record. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what was I? How, yeah, I was house sitting that weekend or something. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we... I was like, it's a big house. It's we have a giant screen, and we can yeah. watch a movie or two. And God, that was ambitious as shit. Because did did we watched Wicker Man, and did we watch Hot Rod right after, or did we record I the podcast think, and then decide to watch Hot Rod? I, I think we recorded. I don't know if we discovered or fuck up. Did we discover or fuck up that night and do it again? Or, no, we, no, we we did, did it again like Monday or yeah. Tuesday. So I think like we. I at, think we at Astral. I think we re- fake recorded, 
uh, we're like, all right, man, we're all pumped. We did a thing. And yeah. then we went and watched the movie in like celebration. And then mm-hmm. I guess we realized we then, you know, I probably when I no, went to you the, told us get later, the, like, get like the files, you, probably to get the files. Well, and I seem to remember it recorded my test of just babbling nicknames for Nick Cage. Mm-hmm. All right, cat. Nick What's Cage up? names. Nick yeah. names. Cage. We get it. Yeah. And and then I guess like you never hit re-record or whatever, yeah, or I you think, hit stop yeah. and it didn't. Yeah, I think I thought I had it on pause when we were doing the test, and it was yeah. the opposite. Because that, 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 Jesus Christ, cat. The cat knows we're doing this. <laughs> hey! Yeah, she was going fucking nuts. Yep. What is it? As soon as I put the fucking headphones back on, she starts up again. Yep. She didn't stop. No, I'll put the, I'll go put the blanket back. Maybe that'll make her shut up. Yeah. Poor baby. <laughs> Where'd my blanket? Blanket! <laughs> I watched a triple feature of favorites the other day when I, yeah. I had a lot of work to do, so I needed something in the background, but it couldn't be anything new because I would pay too much attention to it, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's not fair to that thing either. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I watched um, Princess Bride, Three Amigos, mm-hmm. and Starship Troopers. And it's kind of an odd, not pairing, but an odd you know, group of movies. But those are mm-hmm. three that I can tune into any time. Yeah. And it's probably a perfect point in any, point, in any one of those movies. You're doing your part. Exactly. I have you, have you played Hell Divers 2 yet? No. Um, that seems to be why Starship Troopers is back in the zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And apparently, um, the guy, Casper Van Dien, like, wants to do something for Helldivers 2, which yeah. I, th- I think is hilarious. Um, I, I think Casper Van Dien just wants to do something. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, fair. He probably doesn't want to be in another Hallmark movie. Yeah. yeah. But, um, though he was in Christmas Twister. Yeah, and it fucking ruled. <laughs> Forgot about Christmas Twister, um, but yeah, those three are are perfect movies, and there's no bad point to tune into any one of those three. Um, hmm. You're entitled to your opinion. Which one don't you like? Uh, two of the three. Oh, so you're really wrong about I. It's Princess Bride. You don't like Princess Bride, right? I saw it too late in life. I saw it as an adult, and I'm like, nah. Hmm. But it's it's one of those things. I don't also, understand why it it's, doesn't it's, have anything to do with your age. It has to do with your whimsy level. And well, my, my it's, whimsy is just okay. It, it is also it's a lot like Austin Powers in that everyone has overquoted it so much that if you were to watch it now, you're like, oh yeah, there's that line, there's that one, which isn't the movie's fault, but yeah. You know, it, it's your it fault is for having a hard heart. Yeah, and Star Trip Troopers, I get it, I get it, I get what they're going for. I just don't, I don't think it works. Hmm. Interesting. It, I, I think I think Verhoeven is very smart, and he was the best possible person to make that movie. But I also think he has much better movies than that one. I think it. The funny thing about Starship Troopers for me is it worked when I didn't realize what it was doing, it Mm -hmm. still worked as like a, a campy movie Mm -hmm. for me. And now that I know what it's doing, um, it's better. It it works even better. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, and it's still, it still works as a movie, Mm -hmm. but it, you know, but the, the satire hits harder now for sure. Yeah. And I'll admit it's been probably by more than 20 years since I've seen it. Mm. Probably 25 now. So I probably it's probably due for a rewatch for oh, me for to sure. like give it a reevaluation. Wait, you haven't you're trying to say you haven't watched like Starship Troopers post nine <laughs> eleven? <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I think I did. Uh, okay. Yeah, because well, it I was mean, like you early twenty five years. I mean, I don't, well, I it's our early two thousands, so it was somewhere around there. Okay. But I just don't remember when it was. But I think it deserves a a, a rewatch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially, especially twenty years down yeah. the road. Yeah, twenty five is probably too much. It, it's probably it was probably early two thousands at some point, but yeah. 
that only, came out in the what, only movie 97? 97. Yeah. The only movie of Verhoeven's I will allow to be ranked higher than Starship Troopers is RoboCop. Total, Not, re- Total Recall close, but no. I'd, I'd go with Total Recall. I like Starship Troopers over Total Recall, but just. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Don't get me wrong. I Total Recall Total. is a is a better it's a classic, yeah. Film. Like, it's overall better, but I like Starship Troopers more. Mm-hmm. Get out of here with this basic and stick talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the thing about Starship Troopers is it's a lot like uh, the first three episodes of WandaVision, where it kind of locks into this conceit of, okay, here's what we're doing, and we're sticking to it. And I just don't think it quite works. And I think it's, it's you know, the, like the cast sucks because they're supposed to suck. They're just supposed to be good looking and disposable. And that. Yeah, you're getting it. Yes, but <laughs> that doesn't make it a better movie for me. That makes it a movie that has a bad cast that's bad at what they're doing. But I. I, I don't understand these words that I could. That's fine. There's Dina Myers. And I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, not not every movie is for everybody. But like I said, I should see it again. I should give it another a reevaluation because a lot of people whose opinions I respect really like it. I, I was a Carmen Stan, a Carmen Ibanez Stan for a long time, and nope. I'm still a big fan. But I'm Izzy. I'm now a, a dizzy man. Yeah. Is it dizzy or Izzy? I thought it was dizzy. Oh. Dizzy. Yeah. I thought it was Izzy. I think like everyone Izzy. comes Isabel. around. She, I believe it that. is Isabel Flores, oh. but they call her Dizzy. Okay. It wouldn't be Dizabel. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody would call it. All right. Before I insult anybody, I don't think that there's a name that is Dizabel. Dear but... sirs, <laughs> Hello. I am very, very traumatized by your words. Signed, Dizabel. Yeah. If your name is Dizabel, write to bmf at bmfcast.com. <laughs> You've only got two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Make it happen. Well, you've got, you know, however long. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the mailbag episode, but yeah. All right, should we do proper podcasting? Uh, Yeah, sure. By the way, uh, while we're talking about bullshit, have you seen Argyle, or do you plan to see Argyle? um, What's your thoughts on Argyle? I have not seen Argyle yet. I know, I know it's, it has not received good reviews. I don't care about people, but yeah. I know, but but like I I haven't seen anyone on Letterboxd aside from you that's given it more than a three. Okay. But well, did but you enjoyed it? Oh yeah. yeah. It's it's I mean I mean it's Matthew Vaughn. Yeah, so I you, mean, you know what you're getting at this I point. knew what I was getting. I yeah. mean and I was in wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, especially there there like I said, there is a scene at the end where I was like, Oh, this is why HDR was created. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I do need to watch it, but I just, I haven't watched much lately. Yeah. I still need to watch Dune as well. Okay. So I can see Dune too. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and predict, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're not going to like it. Really? Yeah. I like, to, I like Denis Villeneuve's other stuff. Sure, sure, but just that's just me. And I have played Dune Imperium, the board game. Okay. I learned that uh, everything has a very weird proper name, like Benny Jesuit mm-hmm. and Duncan Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> God, <that's so laughs> which will be dumb. the only and Paul, right? Famous Dune character, Paul. Apparently, my br- my brother's father wanted to name him. Duncan, Idaho. And I don't know if he was supposed I, to be named after Dune or not, after the Dune character. I would like. Why I would literally those... a thousand percent think that yes, it's after the. Dune I mean, unless they're like some kind of like really big potato fan, why else would they call anyone that? I don't know. I, I need to check something. I, I need. Because isn't Duncan uh, a brand of potatoes? 13. Like, uh, or... it is a brand of donuts. No, I know that. I know there's Dunkin' Donuts, but they don't spell it right. I'm pretty sure they had to spell it stupidly because right. of the other Dunkin'. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it could have been. Cause yeah, it, I'm, well, pretty sure the, it, I'm pretty wait, sure the name is literally like wait, Potato Potato. his name's not spelled D-U-N-K-I-N? <laughs> Dunkin'. Dunkin' Idaho. Donut. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Like, 
I'm what? pretty sure the inspiration for Hello, this Curtis. was he looked over and saw a bag of potatoes, and it was like, you know, Dunkin' Potatoes from Idaho. And it was like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's a felon name until I think of something better. I, I love that, like, there's there's like the Mwadaho Wadib, and then there's like Dunkin' Idaho. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing, man? There are Dunkin' I, Potatoes. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's supposed to be that way. It's, it's. I know. I, I, I've heard enough that, like. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's about the, you know, it's a fable about the imperial colonization of the Middle East and taking I the know. oil and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And giving the pa- p- power back to the people. Of the... I know. I get it. All right. And then the bugs come up and invade. And sure. Yeah. You're actually and supposed to you, side with the, the bugs. Then you eat popcorn. Yes. And then you invade Clindathu. Mm-hmm. Yep. Easy peasy. Yeah. It's afraid. Yeah. Anywho. Sometimes you're from Brazil and you just say kill them all. Buenos Aires. It's Argentina. Whatever. Don't cry for me. I haven't seen it in 20 years, so I don't know. I, don't I know. I'm just mixing my movie metaphors. Up. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the BAMFCAST. Hey. Hey. BAMFCAST. BAMFCAST. <sighs> it's a podcast episode about movies. numbers. I don't know. Five ninety nine. Oh right, yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. Five episode fifty enough. Episode penultimate. Mostly yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the proper numbering scale, yes. Penultimate, penultimate episode, episode number. Yeah. Short of the next one, which will be a mailbag. It doesn't have. It will not be six hundred. Right. Pre penultimate. So yeah, get release. your emails and your voicemails in if you want them. This mm-hmm. is your last call, literally. Yeah. Yes. So I'm the second to last Harlow. I'm Mackie. I'm BJ. And what we do each and every episode of this here podcast, we uh, we go and watch ourselves a uh, quote unquote bad movie, and we come in here and talk about it. Then good bad movies, enjoyable bad movies, they get one to five jocks and robot jocks. Robot jocks. That is a terrific. I mean, bad if they're movie. deserving of it, but you know, there's a negative sliding scale: one to five bags and giant bags of trash that the bad bad movies go into. Yeah. See? Yeah. Boo. Boo. That's that's just no. It's a shame, really. Probably not going to be an issue. We prefer p- from the... here on out. I mean, that's our that's our goal. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, one more episode and we sure. won't have to worry about sure. any of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it's night night forever. Yeah. Yeah, we put it all in a bag. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we kick throw it, it, in kick the it right in the jocks. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. So um we are doing our farewell tour, saying goodbye to some of our favorites. Uh <laughs> both metaphorically and yeah. not so much sometimes. Uh but yeah, we are uh handling uh two thousands China Strike Force starring one well, okay, I would say starring, even though he's got the with credit, which is sort of like the Judy Dench credit. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, but I'm sorry, Dame Judy Dench. My apologies. Um, but yeah, Mark Tacascos uh, is is here, and I'm just missing, missing yeah. Mar- March. No, no, he, he's here for March Tacascos. Sorry. It, yeah, it's it is currently March. It is cur- yeah. currently March. Tukoskos. As of recording. As of recording, yes. Um, and also, uh, we are testing one last time, the Coolio principle. <laughs> yep. Yep. Coolio. Coolio as Coolio. Mm-hmm. Yes, there are a lot of characters in this who are going by their first name. Starring That's Coolio correct. as Coolio as Tony Danza. Mm-hmm. Right. The boss. Yeah. He's not the boss. Uh, directed by Stanley Tong. Yes. Uh, director of Rumble in the Bronx. Uh, I'm Stan Super Cop, Lee I believe. Tong. Yes. Um, I think Super Cop 2 as well. I'm not yeah. positive on that. Well, that gets confusing. I, I wouldn't it's feel like, like looking it up. It's because like, yeah, I, it's a Super Cop. Oh, first Cause strike. Because like, yeah, Super Cop is actually what Police Story Four. It's, it's confusing. Uh, yeah, Super Cop Two is the one with Michelle, Ye- Michelle Yeoh, yeah. and then there's Police Story Three, Super Cop. That's the one he did. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying it's it's confusing because they're actually like renamed Police Stories. I think. Yeah, yeah. but I mean uh, the ba- Rumble in the Bronx. Right. Uh, my, that's all my, you really need. Or to know. Arguably, my favorite. I mean, the, my what I would say is it's my favorite Jackie Chan movie. I don't know if I'm going to go as it's the best. It's my favorite. I, I I can't say anything more than that. I just I can infinitely watch that movie. Yeah, yeah. that's all. That's all there is to it. I mean, like I said, I I love so many others, but that one is just one I could put on literally every morning and be happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just wake up and have yeah. a great day. Yeah, just like put it on the you know the, uh, the automatic alarm clock. Just <laughs> <Right>. wake <laughs> up, wake up to rumble. <laughs> It's time, ready to rumble. <laughs> Wake up, you know, the... There we go. Yeah. There, oh, sorry, I just got sued. <laughs> oh, no. I just got sued. Um, anywho. But yeah, um, any other... No, not really. No one else of note shows. I mean, you know, people that were trying to revisit, there are other people in the movie. Clearly. Right. Yeah, and I mean, a... they're... The, the two main guys are uh, are Aaron Kwok and Liam Wong. 
both pretty damn good yeah. martial artists. Oh yeah. Yeah, Standing Tong. I mean, I don't, I don't know these guys' affiliation. You know, I don't know how many. You know, uh, Kevin Bacon's the, the way they are from like Jackie Chan's stunt team, mm-hmm. or if they're actually just part of it. But uh, probably, are. yeah, they're they're hella talented. Is all I can say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that one guy. I wouldn't doubt it if the shorter guy is his. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say Jackie Chan's stunt double, but one of his doubles, because sure. Jackie Chan does so many of his own stunts. Yeah, it's almost like, say. does he, like, this is the guy who does the really fucked up shit. Man. <laughs> like, I want to be, first first job I want to yes, do is Jackie team. Chan's stunt double. Second job, Tom Cruise's stunt double. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, when you say that, you know, you kind of know what you're in for with this, in that uh, there is a solid chance People almost died on this movie. Oh, for I mean, sure. there's a real good chance because we watched the little outtakes at the end. Oh, yeah. Watch several people almost. I mean, actually, there are several shots in the movie where. Yeah, some one in the movie we we're all like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, that man had a family. Yeah, uh, he doesn't, or they they don't have a family member anymore. <laughs> I guess his family didn't get, die on that. Adventure. Yeah, and and I'm not going to spoil the rating or anything, but like this type of thing is 100 percent our shit. With, with the stu- at least as far as the stunts go. Let's put it that way. Like correct. Like anything stunt wise that happens in this movie is getting us like out of our seats cheering. Like we rewound multiple scenes. We're just like, wait, let's watch that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're still here early. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a, this <laughs> yeah. is a brisk movie, and it, and yeah, it, it moves. Um, I, I guess. I mean, I'm trying to think of like the there's most, not much plot. Yeah, I was gonna say the most concise way to sum up the plot. Uh, all right. I think I could do this fairly easily so that okay. we could just talk about the cool scenes and not mm-hmm. like get lost in the minutia of mm-hmm. the doubles and triples and all that cross. Yeah. We have two main cops. Those are the, the titular uh, China strike force, I guess they, no one's ever calls them that or no, it's no, just, yeah. a, it's just a movie title. Um, they're both hotshot cops. It starts with a training montage. Uh, one of them, they get sent to another uh, city to investigate something, and uh, their, his, their contact is the police chief there, who is one of their fiancé's father. Yes. Um, so that just sort of starts a connection there. On the other side, you have a uh, criminal, like, it's kind of like your classic Godfather 2 situation. Um, because you have like old gangster who's basically like no drugs. We do crime and protection money and all that stuff, but no drugs. <laughs> runs runs the com- you know runs the community. And younger guys like all the money we're losing on drugs. Come on, and that's Mark Tocascos. Yep. Uh, so they're basically pushing drugs. I mean, on the head of the family, yep. Coolio is basically the American partner who is like, I you know I run the drugs. I will bring them to China, and we will we will yes. do this. Coolio playing the character. Coolio. Mm-hmm. Is he playing the character Coolio or is that is his title in I the I guess movie. he's not as himself. His name is yeah. Coolio. Maybe so he, he's actually himself and the and the idea is that like the the whole musical thing is a front and that he's actually built a secret drug empire behind the scenes. Well, it didn't say Coolio as himself. So Oh. Yeah. It okay. it is it, it, so it is Coolio playing, you're right. It's Coolio playing the character Coolio. Which is very disorienting at certain points in the movie because they'll suddenly be like, Hey, we gotta catch Coolio. So this is more and, like and, and we're like, wait, are they joking? Yeah. Are they saying that ironically? And it's like, no, the character's name I thought is Coolio. Perhaps they flubbed it. Sort of like I mean, a lot of people think that the end of Star Wars he yells out Carrie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then they're like, Oh, just leave it, he's just happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, can't redub that. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's on there. T- it's it's on there forever. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I guess it's it's sort of like uh, John Malkovich and being John Malkovich or Nicolas Cage and that that movie he made where something it's like a version that, of yeah. himself or a, a he's playing the character Coolio, who in this movie is Coolio, the international drug lord, who may or may not be from Chicago or Los Angeles. Yes. I'm not sure. I think he said something about the and, south side of Chicago, and then it was like it was South Central, and I was like, "That's not that's two different places." Yeah, he also uh, could get used to this shit. That's yeah. his catchphrase. It is man, yeah, I could get used to this shit. Yeah. He says it a lot. He does walk every into a time. Lot, a lot of places they walk into. Every time he enters a scene, it's yeah. man, I could get used to this shit. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the basic plot, and then. Um, you know, I mean, there's, the, the cops kind of get involved because, like, the, uh, there's hot girl. Yes, there there is a Japanese. I mean, she's a. Uh, they call her uh, from Japanese Interpol, which I don't think is she's a thing. The, from the Japanese branch of Interpol. Of Interpol? Yeah. Okay, I'll let's go, go with, with that. that. Yeah. Sure. 
the, the dialogue isn't masterful in, in this, case you don't nor know, is it good. Interpol is just international police. Right. Uh, generally doesn't belong to any one country, uh, right. thus the idea. It's sort of like the NATO or the UN of policing. Right. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> she's... With that said. Yeah. She is pretending to be a bad guy. Right. And it kind of goes back and forth like yeah. eight times. And and some people, maybe Coolio or Mark Dacascos or whomever, are trying to pick off some of the old man's uh, like heads of his table or whatever. So to make him give in to the drug thing. I don't know why that guy was murdered at the fashion show, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't think anyone really ever came forward and took credit for that, per to se. give us an awesome... Uh, Coolio does. Does he? Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, he does kinda, he, he an does, awesome chase scene. Yeah, he does kind of walk out of there very nonchalantly, like, yeah, I planned this. But yes, there is a fashion show where the, yeah. the cops and the criminals kind of sort of happenstance together because they're not really there chasing this whole thing until they witness a murder. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's it's a lot of scenes of Mark Dacascos and Coolio with Coolio going, I can get used to this shit. Mm -hmm. and, and then monologuing about drugs and or how cool this shit is. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. some racist shit. And, and then Mark Dacascos. Then, yes. then countering yeah. with some racist shit. Yeah. And then Mark Dacascos basically saying, uh, just hold on. We'll talk my, my uncle into it soon. Yeah. Uh, Mark Dacascos throughout this whole movie is like, no, we got to take it slow. We'll get there. We just, yeah, we just have to ease and, into it. We'll get and there we'll fast, say, but we'll take it slow. <laughs> yeah, yes. and we'll say early on he is established at firmly as a bad guy because uh, they are smuggling drugs. They come upon an accident in the rain, and uh, they are in a truck that says it's medical supplies. So of course the cops go, "Hey, we got to help this guy. Do you guys have any? You guys have medical supplies?" And he's like, "Nope, we we're empty." He's I, like, "Not even a first aid kit. Come on, man." And yeah. so they, of course, open the back. It says medical supplies. He says, I didn't say there were medical supplies. I just said we didn't have any. And shoots him. And then sees the mom holding the baby, crying over the man that needed medical supplies. In the rain. In the rain. And he promptly shoots all three of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're, they, you don't see them drop. Yeah, but I, I kind of forgot about that part. I forgot that they made him that evil and then, never, and then sort of walked it back where he's just jovial with Coolio for the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, for, I totally forgot about that opening scene where he was super evil. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, when you establish a man yeah. killing a mother and a, a defenseless mother and baby, and this is not like like little kid, toddler. This is like cannot crawl away baby. Mm -hmm. Right. Murders him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it like, says a, it's, no witnesses. it's in like breastfeeding position. I mean, it's, you yeah. know, it's an infant. Yeah. Uh, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he's a bad guy. Coolio is just uh, establishes a piece of shit pretty much from the beginning, though a piece of shit with some great outfits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean featured. I mean, if you're watching the live stream, he his signature hat is uh, you know, kind of like a wide brim fedora with the hat or the top cut off so that yeah. his, his braids can come through. Yep. Yeah, it's a very Coolio hat, and I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, he even has a song on the soundtrack. Two, I really? Believe. Actually, two? three. Three. He has two uh, that are solo. There... Isn't there one with Smash Mouth? Yes, there you are, said? there are two solo ones, and then Smash Mouth featuring Coolio is on the sound soundtrack. Yeah, so enjoy your enjoy Man, 2000. We <laughs> live in amazing times, yeah. don't we? <laughs> we lived in amazing times. Yeah, yeah. this was 24 we years. We just ago. didn't know that we were walking on the sun. Yeah, might as well be. Mm. All right, so yeah, uh, yeah, like you said, the opening training montage is a fake out. Yeah. It's just it's an excuse for for to show that okay we're going to be doing some wire foo here but not a lot. I mean honestly I think that this scene is a, is a great fake out in more than one way because this scene is also terribly lit and the rest of the movie is yeah. lit just fine. I think it makes you it like makes you go oh man everything else looks awesome well, because yeah sort cause, of yeah because you're like oh man they didn't light any of this action and then every other scene is it's also great. weirdly edited because it feels like they cut like you know the impact shot they cut a split second too early. And then they cut a split second too late into the reaction or whatever. So, like, you know, a guy will get kicked through a door and you'll see them jump up and almost kick. And then all of a sudden you've got, like, the guy coming through the door in a way that doesn't doesn't flow the way most good fight scenes do. They're it's, cutting around them pulling punches because it's a training Yeah, exercise. It's also entirely possible. I mean, look, I... Could I, have been I, a third unit director. Well, I was going to say, or, you know, for all we know, they had... 
some hired some other person. Yeah, and, it's all the whole, all the other. Yeah, and then like you know, this was like the first day shooting, and they're like, oh, whatever, we'll use it. <laughs> like, yeah, just put it in there to be a training mm-hmm. montage, and you make your own movie after it. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, but but we are, we learn it's a fake out because ninjas show up at the end and ninjas. shoot one of them, but it's with a paintball gun, mm-hmm. and that's how we learn. Yeah, so like I said, most of this is just them slowly getting to. Uh, it's not Shanghai. What is it? Che, uh, Chenglong, Chenglong? It's Chelong or something like that. It's. It's. I don't. I'm not familiar yeah, with the I city. I don't remember. I, I just know that the the fashion show they go to is in Shanghai. Right. Right. And like you said, it's purely coincidental that yes. they're there. Yeah, they they don't start off chasing Mark Tacascos and Coolio. It just happens that they get on the trail because of this murder at a fashion show, mm-hmm. and then you know they see that they see the the mob boss guy sitting at the same table. Uh, one of them gets chased to the to the Japanese Interpol agent, which I how about I just yeah. say Interpol agent? How about that would be a lot easier? And uh, <laughs> who happens yeah. to be Japanese? It's Norika, yeah. by the way. Um, and then uh, someone else gives chase to the murderer guy, which you know is a crazy chase involving a motorcycle yeah. and an F one. Well, car I mean, and... the way that one guy gets <laughs> oh it though is rough, because he gets a like a like basically a skewer through the neck, like from mm-hmm. the side. Yeah. I, I, Somehow it manages to give off a very like, like crazy scream too. Like it's yeah. a, it's a like, hey everyone, I'm getting murdered here. Scream. I mean, <laughs> yeah. most of the time in movies, it's a very like, oh, or they just fall over dead. You know, immediately. This is like a, ah! <laughs> like, I, have a I have a spike in my neck. <laughs> the guy, he does. I mean. He, that's probably how I'd react if I got spiked, I, if I got skewered through the I neck. If I was physically able to, yes. If it yeah. had like pierced the things able to make noises, sure, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking your 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 neck is probably filling up with blood mm-hmm. at that point. Hard to make yeah. blood curling. Screen. And uh what happened is and and at this point we don't know what Norika's deal is. Mm-hmm. Uh but she other than she's hot. Yeah. And she steals a floppy disk that's in his yeah. jacket. I don't think we even realized it's a floppy the first time. I think she just reaches and grabs something and then we see yeah, maybe I, I see s- it's a floppy. Oh, did you notice Yeah, that? I okay. saw she tucks the floppy in her okay. in her dress and I was like he tucks the floppy in with her napkin. Yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it bothered me because, like, the dress she's wearing, it's like, ah, uh, th- there ain't yeah. no hiding a floppy in that sucker. Right. Yeah. So, either way, that's the there only, that's the only reason I didn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Plenty of hard drives outside. Yeah, because she gets out, and then the one, the one uh, agent. I, I don't remember which is which, but the taller agent, let's just say that, he, he ends up chasing her. Alex, she gets, Alex she gets is the a, orphan, right? He, I think so, sure. yeah. Uh, let, me, let me, yes, Alex. And then the other one's Darren. So yeah, Alex chases her outside and and, follow, and basically she just takes a cab and he just follow, gets a, takes a motorbike from someone and follows her. Right. And, and then his whole thing, and this is intercut between the chase that Darren has where he's chasing the actual murderer. Mm-hmm. Uh, his like Alex is is resolved real quick. They get they get to the hotel. He basically threatens the guy at the counter, and he's like, "I'm a cop. You need to tell me what room she went to." Goes up there. They get in a brief fight where we I, where we get to see that she can she can fight. I want to roll it back one second, only because this bellman or whatever is like the opposite version of the Pee Wee Herman cameo in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Like they have cast this guy and then dubbed him with this like, "Hey, what do you want?" <laughs> voice. Mm-hmm. It is so bizarre. It's yeah. just like the opposite of like paging yeah. Mr. Herman. A yeah. couple of those happen yeah. in this movie. It's it's very weird. Yeah. yeah. But either way, he gets up there. We we briefly see that she could fight because as they're about to handcuff her, she does a spin around. She's able to chuck a few dudes, and she grabs Alex's tie, tightens it around his neck. And then runs over the balcony with the both of them. Mm-hmm. So he's like, he basically grabs on with his legs. But the people have to grab him. I yeah, mean, the people, you know. yeah, the other cops grab him. And she uses that to swing herself into the, the level below and get so away. So fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it looks cool as shit. Because she just does it from his tie, which never tears. So it was it's quality silk. It was a good yeah. silk tie. It was yeah. double stitch. Yeah. So that scene... This is intercut with uh, Darren chasing down the murderer, who they run through this busy street, and this dude gets hit by two cars. Yeah. Like, straight up, this mm-hmm. stuntman got hit by two cars. Like, breaks one of the windshields as he yeah. slides off of one of them, yeah. Yeah, and then they're just running, and cars are just swerving away from them. And it's it's one of those scenes that's, that like, in Hong Kong films where you're like, fuck, man. Fuck. It's terrifying. Yeah. Like, yeah like, like, did they tell anyone on the road, or is this just random people? <laughs> yeah. Is this all guerrilla yeah. footage? Holy God. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the, 
the guy ends up getting in the back of a pickup truck. He's able to run fast enough to hop in the back of the pickup truck. And from here, our guy decides he's going to he, he's able to get into that truck. But then this guy jumps onto the, the car next to him and then jumps off the off the roof of that car onto a bus. Yeah, like a tour bus with like an open deck. And yeah. let's keep in mind, this shit's moving. Mm-hmm. All of it. Yep. Moving and not moving slow. And it's not like, oh, we shot that we they moved half speed and we sped up the foot. No. These guys are fucking jumping between goddamn cars that are going at least 30 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. I would guess. And 30 doesn't sound very fast, but 30 it, on a moving car is way faster yeah, than until you, Yeah, until you realize that Usain Bolt runs at like 11 miles per hour at like his top <laughs> speed. Yeah. It's like 24, but yeah. you know. But yeah, so, so this guy jumps from one car. Onto the hood, onto the roof, jumps onto a bus and is scaling the bus. Our guy has to jump out, take a, gets a motorbike, and then fucking ramps himself onto one of the cars. Like, like basically pull, like d- pops a wheelie and is able to pull himself onto the top of of some little, not a bus, but it's like a little minivan type thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which also happens to have a little ramp on the top of it for a sign. Right. And so he uses that to goddamn ramp himself up onto the top of the bus. All the while, both of these vehicles are moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they're moving 10 miles an hour, that's still A, terrifying, and B, impressive as fuck. I mean, the gravity defying climb up the van is a little silly. It is, but who fucking cares? Yeah. 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 Rule of cool right there. Yeah. And I mean, the other one is, you know, at least they didn't go for the, you know, he launches off of it somehow. At least it's like the bike stops and he, the forward momentum carries him, yeah. you know, yeah. inertia. And then they have this goddamn fist fight on top, like Kung Fu fight, crazy shit on top of this bus. Mm-hmm. Now, wait, was this not the chase that involved the F1 car? Does he get, oh yeah, that's he gets, later. Yeah, he gets knocked off the bus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a completely different yeah, scene. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the dude gets knocked off the bus and gets hit by another car mm-hmm. until he gets to a bridge and then they corner him. And uh, he basically chooses to jump off the bridge to get away. And it works because that guy shows up later. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, I guess he did survive. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Even though that looked like a very long drop. Uh, Maybe he dropped a stone or something ahead of time. Uh, (laughs) That doesn't work. He didn't have a grenade launcher to shoot at it. (laughs) Grenade style. Um, Don't do that, kids. Don't, Don't think that works. Just don't jump off of bridges dangerous yeah and don't go yeah. chasing waterfalls either right don't tug on superman's cape mm-hmm. it does like the whole bridge jumping thing seems nickels. like a really bad way to go especially like when you hit a rock that you couldn't see and your knees go like directly into your brain yeah. through the rest of your body yeah. yeah or just hitting the water hard enough to kill the, it, no to send your legs through your body yeah. but if you survive that then you're basically drowning yeah yeah you know like just and just, if you survive that then you know, brain the dead. Rest of your life is really uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, like, just don't do that. Like, life's cool. A BMF <laughs> PSA. Yeah. Don't fuck it up. I just, like, you could probably jump off like a county road bridge, like one of those things that's like five feet off the water. But I mean, I still probably don't recommend it. Yeah. No. Yeah. But like, yeah, that like, probably still hurt. Yeah, I'm just like, just probably there are better places to jump in the water than from bridges. Probably just across the board. Save up your money. Yeah. Go to Mexico. Yeah. Jump in into but a cenote. Y- yeah, it's pretty sweet. I gotta admit. But anyway, like this guy this guy gets away. Right. By jumping off a bridge that he should not have survived, but he does. And uh from here that's when they're trying to track down what the hell happened. And uh their their chief is not pleased with how everything went because they weren't even really on the job. They were just there like checking out. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, I don't think they were there. No, they yeah, they were literally there capacity. just to meet the fiance and introduce her. I, I yeah. don't know. I don't know why they had to meet. Yeah, because his fiance is a model. No, she's the designer. Oh, she was the designer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So basically, she made bikinis for all these chicks. And yes, yes, yeah, sweet. Mm-hmm. I like her already. Yeah, uh, but from here, that's when they go to the small town of wherever. Where uh, we we are told by the the designer woman's father, the one guy's future father-in-law, that that guy isn't a big deal in Shanghai, but here in this town he is a huge deal, and that you can't just go in and start asking him questions. So he takes them to <laughs> to the boss, who's not pleased that his dude got killed and nobody has any leads about what the fuck happened. Right. 
But then the cops show up and he's just like, uh, they're like, uh, do you know anything about, and he goes, no. <laughs> and just kind of stares them down. And then the, and, and the one guy like has to, tries to interrogate him. Or, or he says something like, you, you know about who was that woman at the table with you? And then he just goes, you may now leave peacefully. <laughs> yeah. It was like, there was a little pause before peacefully. Yeah. It was a good threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and then, and then yeah. they get outside and the police chief's just laughing at him. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. yeah, you see what I'm talking about? This dude's kind of, kind of odd. I mean, I'm just saying, like, his general overall behavior is a little strange. The yeah. boss? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. Of well, course, the thing is, but... like, they do that, and then he, and then they're like, "Yeah, so we got no leads." He's like, "Well, actually, there's probably there, I've heard there's something going down at the docks later today, so you may want to check that out." And they're like, uh, "Okay, why didn't you say that first? And so they go to the docks, and this is where you know Mark Tacoscos, who is uh, like we said, has been doing the Godfather Two thing, and be, be like, "How about those drugs? Mm-hmm. A lot of money in drugs." And so he's basically just going around the old man's back to work with Coolio at this point. Right. So he's taking shipment of uh, Lamborghini Countach, as well as a bunch of beater old Fords that suck. But are full of drugs. Yeah, but they're full well, of yeah, drugs. Well, yeah, I guess we find that out later. But Which yeah. we do find out later because they, they seize the shipment. And the shipment's like a lot of, they, we learn later, it's like old, like this 2000. So it's like a lot of VCRs and other stuff like that, electronics and. I'm curious, and this doesn't have to be like a major. I mean, I know we don't have a lot of time for people to respond to this, but uh, we were having a pre-show discussion about the Princess Bride and how you came to it late. And I understand yeah. this is diverging slightly, but I am curious if I mean I understand that like most people were born after us, and it's increasing number as it goes on. Mm-hmm. But if you weren't born w- where you would idolize the Lamborghini Countach, mm-hmm. is it cool or fucking ugly? Like I, I mean, I just I, I'm wondering because like to us it was the it was the idolization of like badass oh, yeah. hot nasty speed yeah basically anyone in Gen X is like fuck yes yeah. Lamborghini man. right that is like the coolest car that has ever existed it but... persisted long enough for at least folks around my age to also okay. idolize it like I yeah but you're like you have a couple years I'm talking like yeah. I'm talking like someone like Steve like the bird who's well no like, I'm just know, saying like it's not very young exclusive man. to Gen X because sure. I'm technically yeah. the oldest the world's oldest millennial mm. um yeah you were right at that cutoff right yeah. yeah yeah um but like I I remember downloading a non-animated gif from a bulletin board <laughs> of a of a of, of a white Countach yeah, and yeah. had it like as my as How my did that whole wallpaper. thing start when you connected? What's that? Oh, Dumby Dumber D? Oh, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Dumby Dumber. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, Dumby Dumber. Like a modem. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. like a modem. Um, yeah, and I looked that GIF up later because the only thing I could remember is it's, it was called magicar.gif. <laughs> Magic. And that is how I found that was yeah. by was searching for magic card. Single, document. single C at the single end. Single C. Okay, yeah. I was just curious if like, yeah, <laughs> we're all typing it. Furious. Yeah, you're all magic all card. Give. Yep. Give me the labor. Uh, it give one. me a yep. magic carp at first. Mm. Yeah, but it's that it's that Countach yeah. right there. Yeah, um, yeah. If you if you play long yeah. enough, that uh, that Countach will become a, a Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. <laughs> A gear, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that the hottest fucking car uh, in the world? Yes. I just made a Pokemon's joke. I'm it's old. got those big old scoops. On, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Every everything about the Countach is fucking great. Um, I do, I do wonder if, if, if like you know, a child looks at it now and is like, looks like a Cybertruck. Yeah, kind of sucks. I kind of think because it, it's like it's super angular now, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm wondering if it's just like it's hideous to people nowadays. I think if t- I run into any youths, I will. I'll yeah. save. I'll save Magikar.gif to my telephone. I will. And, I will. Yeah, I will say that, like, as time goes on, that car holds a lot less. I. I think it's because I've ridden in one in my life now, and I understand how awful they actually are. Like it is. A, well, for 1982, it wasn't awful. It was oh no, they, they absolutely were. No, they still were. They it, like the engine. All is, cars were awful. The literally the engine was like in your neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where you want it. <laughs> yeah, you want to feel that power. I'm just saying, like you're sitting there, right and it's in just the like neck. <laughs> it's right there. It, it's it's awful. Anyway, I just my my feelings on it have softened over softened over time, and I just I, well, I you're out. You're well, fired. sure. Watching this, still fucking love it, man. Okay, yeah. It, yeah. 
and it was Sunstreaker. So, okay, there's that. All right, but uh, yeah, they he takes delivery of one of those, mm-hmm. and as they bust everything, you know what's about to happen. Mark Costco's is going to take off in that fucking car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, this is where he gets chased with the yeah. Okay. Yeah, but not before uh, one of them, I think it's Darren again, like avoids getting hit by basically jumping on top of it. Because, I mean, this is one of those things like it's and it's in the outtakes, too, where there's mm-hmm. like a fishtail, like a J turn type thing. Right. Into a crowd. And the one guy has to kind of like jump it. Yeah. But the timing is off a few times and you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this this whole sequence with the with the Countach and, and eventually it's about to be an F one car join the fray yeah. too is just basically like seventeen deaths of James Dean rolled into one scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, because... that's an ancient reference for you. Yeah. Doesn't know how he died. Well, yeah, yeah. if there's a semi, they're gonna try and yeah. drive between the between it. Right. You know, it, it's basically it's gonna get perpendicular to them, and they're gonna try and go underneath it. And. Uh, yeah, this happens multiple times. Like they're going through basically a cargo, like a, a loading docks area, and there's like a, a one of those nets full of just shit hanging there, and they're trying to get the guy off by driving under these things, so he has to keep ducking under mm-hmm. not, underneath all of this stuff. Yeah, and I just I I know it's the way they film it, but like they've got kind of like the camera low on the hood, facing mm-hmm. back on the guy hanging back on it, and it's just like you look at that shit go by, you're like, God damn, yeah, God damn, that's close. Yeah, Every please. time. But the way it ends is the guy realizes that the semi they're about to go under is too low. So he stands up and jumps and basically slams into the side of the uh, semi truck, the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is not stunt CG anything. This is a dude on the back of a car that's going at a fairly good clip. I mean, the best slamming into the side of this fucking the best we can trailer. hope is that they you know, at least replace so that it was like rubber on the side or something, yeah. you know, but, right. uh, uh, but yes, I mean, at, at the very least we saw what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it looked like it hurt a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That guy got jacked. And, yeah. and the thing is he jumps up. So he lands, you know, a good eight feet up on the thing and then kind of like falls from there onto the ground and just kind of rolls. But he's like, I got to chase this guy. And uh, the only car around is a goddamn F1 car. Yeah, I don't really understand why they are servicing F1 cars here, but when life gives you an F1 car, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. say and Alan one, Z. Once again, rule of cool. Right, yeah. Uh, hey, F1, let's do a car chase with an F1. And also, they're in the middle of, of China in this small city or wherever they are. And, and, and also, it's an entire team of French mechanics with this car. Like, sacre bleu, what is all? <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, we get another car chase. Uh, this time, a Lambo being chased by a goddamn F1 car. Mm-hmm. But he also has some kind of uh, truck. Uh, like a box truck that uh, I guess those guys were working with him because he tells them to keep blocking the F1 car. Right. And I think we all knew where this was going. And at some yep. point he national lampoons Christmas vacations it. Yep. Like, like, so like 18 wheeler is going down the road with a, you know, trailer on the back and an F1 car is going in between the trailer on either side. Yeah. And also just driving there for an extended period of time. And, all the while, my toes nearly broke because they were curled so hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and the thing is, he keeps he keeps jumping out to the like he can't see, and the guys can't see him, mm-hmm. and he keeps bumping out to the left. Yeah, not the right, which would be open. He keeps going to the left into incoming tra- oncoming traffic, and he's like, "Nope," swerves back, does this a lot. Yeah, more than I am comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and finally is able to get out and gun it and get past them. And is about to catch up, but I guess I can't quite tell if I, I'm probably confusing the cut footage with 
what happens in the movie. I feel like the I feel like the semi truck uh, jackknife for some reason. Yeah, it's like jackknife's way ahead of the Lamborghini. Right, and then I, it, it seemed like he was on the way to like you know some kind of uh, free jack crash. Sorry for that weird reference, mm-hmm. but I, I just like it. Just seemed like he was about to be in some kind of horrible wreck, and then they just sort of cut away, and because he, he was like oh for half a second, and then. Yeah. Just like, okay, okay, later. Well, yeah, yeah. Dacascos gets underneath it. It does uh, shave the, the uh, oh, right, spoiler yeah, off. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but this is this is why he he eventually has to, uh, Darren eventually has to stop the stop the vehicle. And he, and they slide it and he just goes, he has to duck down because the top of it hits like the end corner of the semi trailer, mm-hmm. yeah. which would have ripped his head off. Sure. But yes. Uh, so Mark Dacascos gets away, but it's a good scene. Yeah. And the thing is, like, as it, all the stuff we were saying early on, like, oh, it was poorly lit and, you know, the, and edited weird. None of that here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All I, this I, shit looks great. I feel like that was also like a teaser of like, yeah. oh, you're about to see a, you know, maybe it was, it, it honestly may have been like a creative decision because of the era of movies that we were in. Mm-hmm. I mean, that straight to video, like, GG, GG, you know, like super, like, shit ass editing that we were going through. And it was just like, let me make the beginning of this movie wrong so I can show you <laughs> it'll look more cool when it's mm-hmm. right later on. Maybe. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't know, but all, all this stuff, awesome. Uh, from here, I, I don't know, man. Uh, the chick shows back up to like Coolio and Mark Costco's hang out a lot. Yeah, they're in like a Turkish bath at some point. Yeah, and the, and, and the chick shows up and throws him the disc and says, "Hey, I want in on this." Mm-hmm. Which apparently they had to do like eighty-seven times, like the package scene in Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like they in, the, there's like eight outtakes of him just trying to catch that floppy disc in yep. that. Um, but yeah, that Coolio's like, I don't trust her. You know, she's wearing what a wire. She's wearing a wire. Yeah, thing. so she does a weird, like, I'm going to strip, but not for the camera thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And then it's just like, they're like, all right, well, we're we're on board with you now because titties. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, well, she's it, proving she's not yeah. wearing a wire. Yeah. And that she's willing to show off her yabos. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, the thing about Coolio in this movie as well is basically anything is an excuse to to talk loud mm-hmm. and sound kind of angry about it. Yeah. Right. Even though it doesn't necessarily, like, the conversation doesn't flow that way. Not at all. Yeah. But it's kind of like that's the speed. Coolio either has, man, this is cool as shit, or, hey, this isn't right, and I'm angry about it. And those like, those are the two the two the two faces of Coolio. I feel like he wants to hit that that side that Ice T has that he just doesn't that yeah that like I can flip on the angry and sell it and I'm sorry I just don't buy it from Coolio never nope. did really so yeah yeah I just yeah I mean like when Ice T flips on that switch in those movies you're like fuck yeah the scary guy like you mm-hmm. could fuck me up I don't feel that way about Coolio yeah <laughs> yeah. Even though Coolio arguably probably was more dangerous. Probably. I mean, he honestly, he's probably like a foot and a half taller. I think Ice T's like a little fella. Yeah. <laughs> I think he is. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. No. But uh, so uh, this establishes her as being on their side, I guess. But then the next scene is him basically deciding, uh, DeCosco's deciding, all right, uncle's not going to give in because we've already had him meet with Coolio who says, hey, this Zen garden here is cool as shit. I need to get me one of these. And then the uncle's like, yeah, how about you just go back to the U S and sell your drugs there, buddy. And, uh, that's, that's when Mark Tocasco is basically like, uh, let's accelerate things. <laughs> Cause at first it sounds like he wants to wait for the uncle to die. And Coolio's was like, no, I know these guys, he's going to sit in this garden and we're going to be waiting 20 years and it's not going right. to happen. So Tocasco decides it is time to stab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a like a weird stealth scene. Like the dude's uh, chanting, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, He's doing his Buddhist prayer. Yeah, and he just sneaks in and stabs him with what looks like a giant uh, foil. I mean, it looks like a weird round sword. Mm-hmm. I don't like a poker. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, yeah. like a rapier or sure. Something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I think he means because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and, and immediately <laughs> immediately she comes in and tries to like 
it does the thing like where she comes to the finds the body and then tries to like pull the sword out. But of course, the cops show up at that moment and she has literal blood on her hands. Mm -hmm. And this is where we find out that if we're only going to give you two pro tips for this, uh, this episode, the first one, of course, is don't jump off of any bridges, no matter the height. Don't do it. And the second is if you uh, you come across a dead body, uh, especially one that appears to have been murdered. Don't don't touch touch it. it. God, just don't touch. just don't touch it. I mean, now if it's alive and it's asking for help, that's a different story. Touch it then, but uh, otherwise, yeah. yeah what are you gonna do? Well, I mean, if it's alive and asking for help, it's not a dead body. So well, that too. I mean, yeah, I'm saying it qualifies. Like, well, from... I mean, if you're walking along, and you're like, oh god, a dead body, and then it's like, help me. Oh, you're like, yeah. oh, okay, all right, well, you know, dis- disregard rule. Right. It's you know, I'm just well, giving the whole, becomes, I'm giving the whole yeah. Asimov uh, you know yeah. set of rules here. It immediately yeah. becomes not a dead body as right, soon as sure, you yeah. yeah. But anyway. Is that what it does? It goes, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel happy. Yeah. Oh, get this katana out of me. Oh, oh. Ooh, ooh, get this katana out of me. I believe this knife is yours. <laughs> You've fallen for my trap. Oh, that is like some dagger I see yeah. before me. <laughs> Call an ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> uh, the old uh. rope dope uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Unk's dead. So, um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're they're free to do the drugs. And she's arrested. Yeah. And also, at some point, he has he has clued him in that his uh his whole uh, drug mule process is that they're going to dump the drugs offshore, load them into a pipeline, and pick them up. I don't know, however many hundreds of kilometers, miles off the shore. In I like, like it. It's in, good like, idea. in like four minutes later. Or so yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because at some point, uh, Alex is uh, preparing to propose to his girlfriend. After this Whoops. is after the after the car chase bust, and we're like, "Oh, Alex is so dead." Yeah, they had a, well, they had a dinner first where he's like, "Here's the ring. I'm going to ask her later tonight." And we're like, "Oh man!" And then he goes like, "Man, it's just wish your parents were here." And I'm like, "But I'm confused. He's got he's he's going to die because he has a fiance, but he also has orphan vision. So which one's yeah, going to win?" I know. Uh, well, spoilers, it's the, yeah. it's the fiance. All I'm yep. saying is, like, if you're going to get married, do it quick. I, uh, I also, or don't be a cop. Yeah. I mean, you know. Those or, are your two choices. Well, if you are a cop and you get, like, engaged, get, you just, like. Yeah. Don't get engaged. Well, go you, straight you, to marriage. Yeah, you know judges. Like, literally just go find one and have them marry you. Like, because otherwise you're you're walking a tightrope. Directly to marriage. Between life and death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I do love that Darren is just, like. Okay, that's cool. However, uh, I think I figured out where the drugs are. Right. So why don't we go do that instead? <laughs> and I was like, "No, I think I'm going to propose to my girlfriend tonight." Thanks. Yeah, He's like, good. "Oh," and then he goes, "Oh, oh yeah, I forgot." <laughs> it's like, Darren, how good a friend are you, man? It does seem that they're actually setting Alex up to get killed. You know, you know, going off and investigating the junkyard or, or, or Darren or, or impound lot by himself. Yeah. I thought, well, Alex is the one not. No, Alex, Alex is, the is the one, one getting married. married. Yeah, Darren, Darren's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the single man, kind of a loose cannon, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, but he finds the drugs, and then they're like, "All right, we got all the drugs. Mm-hmm. Good job." Yeah, they were sneaking them in on old Fords. Yep. Why would someone use old Fords? He figured it out. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and he he calls he calls Alex on the night that he's getting engaged. It's like. Hey, found the drugs. Why don't you come down to the precinct now? <laughs> Which he does. Yeah. Yeah, he interrupts his Montel Jordan time to go down there and yeah. deal with the drugs, which is just, that is not how you do it. No. I know where you're going with that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it actually was Montel Jordan's yeah. too. But anyway, so from here, yeah, the, she's arrested. She's in jail. Darren figures out, you know what? She's a cop. Run her prints. And yes, that's where we learned she's with Japanese Interpol. She's been trying to chase down Coolio, who had killed her partner. Mm -hmm. Um, And then assume the identity of Coolio. Yes. Uh, And from here, we have a weird scene where Darren fantasizes about, like, she's stretching in prison. Yeah, she's doing yoga. And somehow tweaks something. And so he has to massage her inner thigh higher and higher Mm -hmm. at her request. Right. And then starts making out with her. It's basically a dear penthouse come to life. Yeah. And then he snaps out of it. I mean, because, yeah. Yeah. And then he snaps. But it gives us a chance to mention the music in this movie. Sure. Which sucks. Okay. (laughs) 
it's yes. really bad. Yeah, I mean, and and totally, pretty much all of it because I mean we're talking about licensed music too, but I mean, yeah, it's but all it's like bad. really, it's all over the place. Well, and it's also it's it's so aggressively obvious about what it's doing each time. Like right. like when like when the when the Interpol chick has to strip to show she's not wearing a wire, it like kicks in with the porno music, and then like the second she's done they just shut off like it just stops Mm -hmm. like it's not like there's no transition there's no none of that and it's the same thing with this it's basically the score version of like the suicide squad needle drop on the nose thing but you know someone actually sat down and made original shit for it i mean there's a you know there are needle drop songs in this mostly several coolio songs and the montel jordan thing i mentioned but yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah i mean and the one of the coolio songs i think the first time we're introduced him at the fashion show is I mean, yeah, it's something I'm not saying, about girls. I'm not and... saying, you know, there's like a lot of Coolio songs that are straight classics, but this is particularly bad. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. yeah there are only like, three I, I like Coolio girls. songs anyone knows, and there's a reason everyone yeah. only knows three of them. Right. Yeah. We've been spending most of our lives trying yeah. to forget that this one exists. And one of them is due to Stevie Wonder doing the entire thing outside from the rap for that song. Hmm. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, he has this fantasy about making out with her and she's like, nah, fuck you. When he wakes up and actually gets to talk to they her. They have a weird, you know, it's like, it's like moonlighting condensed down to 10 minutes. Cause like one second she's like, Hey stud. And the next she's like, get away from me. You suck. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, this is, this is their dynamic. It also seems odd that like they've, they found out that she's an Interpol agent and yet they're still like keeping her in a cell. You know, it just, it seems uh, it, like I it's mean, weird. Sure. But yeah, but it, basically they let her it's go. It's not a hotel. I mean, they, <laughs> there's a bed there. I don't know. Uh, it just seems odd it's, it's that they odd. would imprison her despite knowing who she is at that point. But anyway, yeah, but they let her out and she, she, this is where we get well, basically. Actually, I think our, it was part of the plan because they, yeah, because they, yeah, they were like, oh, we're going to make it yeah, seem like we're yeah, going to lock you up overnight. We're going to call in a fake lawyer and then release you. And then, you know, yeah, you and you hate your cover. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, you're right. Yeah, but you did you did mention the outfit that they put her in when they let her leave. Uh, oh yeah, they this, the the silken or the silky uh, Velma. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah they, they silken Velma. Yeah, they like we always talk about silken Goku, but this is like a silky Velma because it's like this f- super flowy, super orange Velma mm. top, but it's you know, but with like sex appeal, I guess. Yeah, S- mild sex appeal. I mean, if you're super into silk, I guess. What's <laughs> funny is it works when she shows up later in it. Sure. Because yeah. because this leads us to our final sequence, pretty much, where they're at. I, it's somewhere in in China that's like one of those huge like, like not, old, not like temple. Old, yeah, almost but, like almost like the Forbidden City, but like a smaller version of it. Yeah, you know, but I mean, it's a big open area, it, big Chinese castle. It probably was an old, you know emperors i mean because there were multiple emperors in multiple yeah. parts of china and also you know dynasties and things so it probably was a palace at some point in time. yeah but but it's like this giant walled palace and you know they've got the giant chair that coolio of course has to sit in mm-hmm. but as as he and mark dacascos are talking you see in the background her storming in in her orange outfit and being like what the fuck was what, what was the, who set me up yeah. and they're like and coolio's like i did because i needed to find out that you were you know that you were that you were yeah. good, and you it was a test, and you passed. And yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean I, he gives Coolio a uh, like a yellow and or like a golden purple and red Bentley, I think, or uh, Rolls. It's a Lakers colors uh, Rolls Royce. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say Bentley, but I mean Rolls. It's like a for some reason my brain says the wrong thing. Once you get in that price range, I, yeah, it's, I, it's a it nice ass car with a hood ornament. So, yeah. You know. Um, yeah, uh, I guess the guys are there because they know that's where she went. Uh, but our good guys have shown up and, uh, also as, as they're about to leave in the helicopter, they go back in for some reason. And she's like, how about a toast before you head out? Yeah. There, there are several things that happen at the end here that a, were never really foreshadowed at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause I mean, uh, of all the things dropping at the end, turns out that the the future father-in-law sheriff of this Being place, on the take. yeah, he's on the take and has been the entire time. It was slightly hinted at, maybe, 
Other, I, other than like I've seen a movie, you know. I, I think right. it, the one yeah. scene where he's threatening the one dude to throw him out the window. Sure, that was supposed to be. I uh, guess. Was it? I mean, I just thought they were like looking f- for answers. Yeah, I mean, it's played kind of ambiguously. Yeah. But, but anyway, he yeah. he walks in at one point and is like, "I'm out. I'm going to retire from the police. I'm going to retire from you. I want I want money." Blah blah blah. You know, I'm going to expose her for a cut of your your giant stake in money. Yeah, and that that's basically like how he outs her and how he basically is dealt with because. Of course, that sh- starts a shootout, but yeah, like because he tells he, he he gives her up, and then Coolio is like, "All right, then I'm going to shoot you," mm-hmm. and that's sure. when the other two guys are like, "Fuck, man!" And so, uh, one of them like Darren is chasing down multiple guys, like like one of the henchmen, uh, and Alex is kind of stuck in the gunfight with Mark Tacoscos. And she is is basically kung fu fighting with Coolio. Mm-hmm. Well, Coolio's oh. stunt man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, at some point in this movie, it turns out like even Coolio knows kung fu in this and yeah. and joins it. This, or... this is the first time we've seen it. Right. Because at least Mark Dacascos, like that's the thing is he has not done any stunts aside from like one sparring match with right. his henchmen that in the middle of the movie, which was badass because like they were going at full contact, full speed. Other yeah. than like you know there was a very clear whiff of a foot at the end, but I mean like they're I'm pretty sure their punches were legit. Like they were actually yeah. just going full contact. Yeah. But. But yeah, so it was like at least hinted that he had some training, and but yeah, mm-hmm. Kung, Kung Fulio just breaks out of nowhere in the, yeah. at the end, and you know, kip ups and everything. I mean, it's yeah. just like he's yep. yeah, it's crazy good. He's got a sweet stunt guy. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, but yeah, the, the match is uh, better than a lot that I've seen. Yeah, right. he really does. I yeah. just realized, like, um, okay, so I I think before the temple scene, I think Alex bites it before that, doesn't he? Because no. like, doesn't doesn't nope. it, like they get to the temple and he's. Nope. It's during the temple scene. It's during the temple scene. Yeah, yeah it's okay. it's right out. It's basically like the the father in law gets shot like four times. Right. Yeah. Like like he gets clipped in the very first time. Sure. And then the next time he oh, right, uh, yeah. like like he gets shot again, and then Coolio ends up fucking executing. Him, yeah, basically. he's he's trying to drag. Yeah, that's right. He's trying to drag his future father in law behind a pillar, and Coolio is just there, like perpendicular to him, and just lights him up. Too. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, and and we'll just say there's some badass fight scenes just just random like that like darren ends up taking on the the blonde henchman that 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 de Costco's had been sparring with earlier right like in the cocaine lab mm-hmm. and he does this one move that we had to rewind like i know it's a wire move but it's just like he gets this jump up and he gets the swing with one direction with the one leg mm-hmm. and then just comes around with the other one and just cracks the dude in the head the only thing i can think of that this is similar to it god it's such a bad example because it's not a great movie, but it's uh, that Jet Li movie, Black Mask. Mm-hmm. He does a move like this in, in a hall or a alleyway. Yep. Where he, he can, yeah, kicks one dude and then kicks the other dude the other direction. Yeah. And then just like lands all super cool. And it's you know, clearly wire shit from back then. But I mean, it's like it's this looks much more like actual. Like it doesn't it doesn't look scream wire work like, yeah. like that Black right. Mask thing did. Yeah. The only he, the no. only part of this that's a little bit weird is they cut right before the last move. Um, or they they cut to a different angle, I guess, mm-hmm. for for the last move. So it doesn't look super smooth. Yeah. But but yeah, but the Jesus the actual Christ. kick Every, itself, yeah. you're like, yes, mm-hmm. yeah. So th- even though they're supposed to be one move, even taken as two moves, they're in fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. A lot of gun battle stuff. A lot of a lot of fighting and yeah. And then and then it's like. It kind of gets upped. Like, this is a badass move. And then it kind of gets upped because before uh, Alex is about to be shot by Coolio, mm-hmm. they start double fighting. Like, yeah. Like, the ones on the ground, sort of like in a almost like a gymnastics, like, you know, like uh, launch position yeah. sort of thing. Like, cheerleading. Like, put or, your feet on mine. Yeah. Like, cheerleading or Jabberwockies or whatever, where they like yeah. do a move like, here, launch off of me. And, and it's yeah. like, yeah. But he's instead like launching them back towards Mark DeCosco's to mm-hmm. like bounce off the walls and shit i mean it's yeah it's, it's cool and he's doing some flips and it's like it's it, it's bad it looks awesome yeah but then he's like i gotta go help father-in-law right why don't you like you you take him on and this is basically just darren and de Costco's just going at it mm-hmm. for a bit um until uh until one of the until, <laughs> until the henchman shows up the blonde one and is able to i think he shoots alex like in the hip kind of something like that or yeah. no he shoots he, he he somehow 
clips Darren yeah, while he's fighting to Costco's, but it him. but it doesn't really affect him at all. It like it looked like it hit him in the hip. It, it's it's weird. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a graze or something, just enough to affect him. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, he so he has to dive for cover, and so Alex goes, "Well, fuck, man, we're in an old <laughs> we're in an old fortress." So he grabs a goddamn spear and just fucking impales that guy. Mm-hmm. Just chucks the spear and oh. just oh, yeah. murders that dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the thing is, is like I, I know that it used to be much more prevalently used, uh, you know, tool weapon. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we don't see too many spears thrown at people, and like you know, there's something about that, like big giant stick of wood partially sticking through a human that's just yeah. kind of satisfying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really is. Spears are uh, yeah. uh, spears are a, a objectively mm-hmm. better weapon than just about anything else. Sure. But he does that, and then he runs over to uh, the father-in-law, the police chief, and is trying to drag him behind the pillar. And mm-hmm. Coolio just kind of just shows up yeah. and shoots him. Yeah, and then Coolio basically, like, you know, they have to have the whole, like, no, don't die, and tell my fiance I love her. While Coolio's basically like, cheese it, it's the cops. I'm going to go yeah. take the helicopter. Yeah. Um, and now they have rigged the cargo net to the bottom of the helicopter to drag this Lakers Rolls Royce under the helicopter. Yeah. Now, Coolio's on board, basically. Like, And the whole, the idea was, like, they're all going to get away on the helicopter. I guess someone else was going to drive Mark Dacascos' Countach for him because they were just going to take Coolio's car to the docks and he's going home or whatever. But so he's like, all right, leave Mark Dacascos and everybody else, like, take off now. Mm-hmm. Um, while they're having the, oh, God, my partner's dying moment, I guess Mark Dacascos decides, like, I'm also going to get away. So, like, the helicopter's already, like... Well, yeah, the cops have shown up outside, yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah the, the, the helicopter's already starting to take off, so, like, all the henchmen that are left are basically, like, climbing onto this car slash cargo net under this helicopter, including... Cargo Mark, net. Yeah. <laughs> including cargo Mark, net, cargo up. Yeah, including Mark DeCarsco. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, so, like, it, it kind of becomes, like, a, a slightly, like, a Mission Impossible Fallout situation where you've got a bunch of dudes hanging on this cargo net mm-hmm. under a, a helicopter for a while. Yeah. And, it, it turns out, I guess it is really his final shot. Like Mark Dacascos is, is hanging on the front of this. Well, it, it somehow she she's able to jump off a cop car and get on there as well right. onto oh, the. She net. jumps off like, and her stunt is really good. Yeah, yeah, and then the other guy is able to, or Darren's able to get on too. Oh, yeah, I, he's yeah. Got, sorry, like, I guess we should back up. Get it, cause he's she, got adrenaline fury. Yeah, she's all the way up at the top of the temple. Has to take like a flagpole, like one of those like. You know, like yeah. ride the flagpole things yeah. yes. down. She um, Harvey dangers she pull, she down pull boys. into the grass. <laughs> well, what was that? Is that um, what was that? Is that in Captain Marvel? That where it's like climbed to the top of the pole and she just like pulls the pin on the on the flagpole and it falls over. It's like it's a lot easier to. I don't be I smart don't than I think. I, think, I was just know, thinking like, of the pole boys in. Uh, or was in, that no? That's in actually in Captain America. Sorry, it's the wrong Captain. I think Captain America does that. Like when he's super skinny, Captain America, he just looks at the flagpole yeah. and like I'll just pull the pin. But anyway. It's like yeah. that. She she just gets on this bike pole, like rides it down, like hops over like three cars, jumps up on the cargo net. He's the one that's like, my friend just died. I'm all hopped up on rage. Give me yeah. my Harley Davidson, and you know I'm going to Steve my queen my way onto this mm-hmm. uh, cargo net. So yeah. he rides all around the fucking uh, temple until he finds a ramp, basically. Yeah, yeah. And again, he doesn't really like ramp the motorcycle onto it. He finds like a wall. Oh, Jesus Christ! Full speed onto the wall so that he just inertias his way onto oh. this. And takes out one dude like as like one guy's like threatening uh the lady I can't I still can't he remember just him cannonballs yeah, he into just basically her like spears him off of there uh, Narika <laughs> yeah yeah and and, uh, and Coolio shoots the rest of them so basically it ends up just Mark Dacascos her and Darren in right. the net yeah and uh and Mark Dacascos like they all kind of end up like doing like the hanging on the side like we can't mm-hmm. really get a grip because we're all trying to kick each other off mm-hmm. and he's sort of hanging off on the on the front of it and the pilots have been saying like we got too much weight I can't take off. I don't know why yeah. they thought they could drag this. Rolls and, and, Coolio, in the first place. and Coolio's like, you're not dropping my car. Right. Even though he's shot it like 16 times at this yeah. point. But they yeah. they basically just ram the car into the side of the temple with Mark DeCosco's hanging on the side. And that's, yeah. that's basically his ending. He's, I mean, he gets yeah. smeared onto the yeah. building, yeah. I guess. Yeah, he becomes part of Chinese history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so deeply ingrained. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then they just, they get, they find a construction site where yeah. they're building a skyscraper. And they just smash the car into the side of the building where there's like a net that it gets to ha- get stuck in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they're just like banging it against the steel girders for a bit so that everyone yeah. gets rocked I, around. I think I don't so, think this was intentional. So either. with yeah. what happens, I think the implication is yeah, it got stuck there, mm-hmm. and then because they couldn't get it disconnected, that's what happens with the helicopter yes. later. Mm-hmm. Yes, because but 
you don't really realize what they're doing, but it just seems like they're being dicks to them because right. they're like just yeah. ramming this car against the side of the building. And so the two of them, this is Darren and uh, and uh, what uh, Interpol, whatever yeah, her name uh, is. My, uh, yeah, I can't remember now. Fuck, it goes out of my head the second you say it. I Noriko. Don't know. Noriko. Noriko. Yeah. yeah, Noriko. So they end up falling off of the car, and they fall onto, there are three giant panes of glass. And it's like, you know, skyscraper. Like the site, like the building siding. You know, yeah, like, like the, skyscraper plexiglass. Right. So it's not like they're going to hit it, and it's going to start doing the crack thing, like it's not going to shatter. It's just, they're going to hit it. It's strong as shit. Mm-hmm. Right. It, this stuff can deflect bullets yeah. type type glass. So they land on it, but it's basically set up like a seesaw. Yeah. yeah. So she hits it first and just kind of slides and it does the whole like slide the hands on glass thing. Yeah, she gets time. hanging on the edge and he's like, Oh fuck that thing's She's going to die. Like it's going to flip and she's going to die. So he jumps onto the other side to counterbalance the right. weight. Yeah, and is like doing this whole, you know, I want to creep forward and help pull you up, but every time I do, it starts leaning down, so I've just got to go to the edge and stand there and hope you can pull yourself up right. kind of yeah. thing. And it's, I guess at some point, I, I really, this is what the, the part that is hard to understand at first, uh, because Coolio is basically like, enough of this helicopter, I'm going to die for the car slash cargo net, and yeah. does, and hits that, and then... Yeah. I guess we realized that they probably just cut some sort of explanation, like a cutaway shot of the pilot going, you know, or, you know, instruments going beep, 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 whatever, mm-hmm. something just yeah. to like, you know, let us know that this helicopter is in yeah. danger because right. he jumps and then it basically sort of explodes. Maybe they Blows just assume right behind him. Yeah. They just assume that we know that a helicopter that is tethered to a Lakers colored Rolls Royce that is run into the side of a building is going to crash into the said building and explode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That old proverb. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That old chestnut. Yeah, but Coolio ends up on the car, and then he ends up on the on the. Yeah, he jumps. Down, he jumps down too. like into the center, and then kind of starts fighting between the two of them, and, like knocking them off of either side. I, uh, man, my, the scene goes on for a while, and my hands were so fucking sweaty by the time this scene, like 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 when I play an Uncharted filled. game or or you know Assassin's Creed, where it's like climb this you know three thousand foot tower, my hands are just like no, I know it's fake, but also. Yeah. yeah, and the way they film it, like, yeah, I mean, it's so good. It's a, it's just, it's, it's a giant pane of glass. It, it's it, convincing it's, as shit. It's, it's, yeah. it's basically like your perfect like magician's platform because it's basically like, look, ma, no wires. Like you know, like it's just a giant pane yeah. of glass hanging you know thirty yeah. stories up. And whatever. I don't even know how they hide the wires on this. Honestly, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think by two thousand we gotten CG enough that they at least could paint out wires because okay. I mean, there's, there's one like shot where you can see Coolio's or Coolio's stunt person's uh, jacket sort of getting lifted up. I think that yeah. really was Coolio in that shot, but yeah. Um, but yeah. Also, but, yeah, like I said, there's, there's a lot of ways where this could have been, um, uh, they could have had two sets. I mean, they could have had like a, a completely stationary one with a, in like a green screen type of room mm-hmm. so that they can just stand up there normally. And then, you know, some yeah. kind of crazy rig where all the stuff it all people looked, go on. Yeah. It all looked uh, Totally yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks, looks, it looks however they did it, yeah. they pulled it off really well because it's, it's except it, for the tight shots, it's all vertigo inducing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and the thing is too, like each of them keeps getting kicked off of the edge. Yeah, and and it's like they're scrambling because there's no grip because it's smooth glass. Right, right. And so as they're trying to pull themselves up, you hear the and and. Oh, oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Like it's it's just one of those things that just works because you feel it, right? You know, you feel like the legs dangling with literally nothing underneath you as you're watching these people do this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the human equivalent of the itty bitty spider. I mean, yeah. you're just like every time they start to get up, like yeah, they start yeah. sliding back down again. It's like fuck. Yeah. yeah, and at some point, he's able, like he got kicked off, and he was hanging hanging on the side for a while, and mm-hmm. he's able to get himself up. While she's fighting Coolio, and he's like, you hear him yell, duck. And he does a fucking jump kick at Coolio on this platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which knocks Coolio off to the edge. Yeah. And then he's like, please, man. Yeah. Don't let me fall. I don't want to die. And they actually go to the back, like, so he has more leverage to pull himself up. Mm -hmm. And he gets up. He's, and, he's starting to. I think he's like no, he, halfway pulled up, doesn't he? he? No, he gets up and oh. he stands up. Okay. 
And that's when the Rolls Royce gives out. Yeah. yeah, the cargo net or whatever that was holding it up. Yep. Up there. Cargo and down. that yeah. fucker comes down, hits Coolio, hits the glass. Shatters all the glass. Shatters the glass. And and, and also sends uh, Narika flying up into the air. Yeah, it, it, it basically catapults her yeah. Yeah, on the other end. It's like the thing, uh, what's that old Atari game where you're like, Playing the circus thing where the people are bouncing on the oh yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I mean it's just it's sort of like that you hit the other side and mm-hmm. the old man flips in the pool and the mouse uh, comes down yeah and but and because all the panes of glass have shattered from this he hangs by his feet and basically catches her trapeze style yes mm-hmm. and they're they basically got each other's forearms and it fades out all is well credits and then, roll yeah and it, it, and, it and the next to gray son. Yeah, and the next thing we see is him at the airport uh, helping the now widowed fiance. Is that a <laughs> is widow? Is she widowed? No, I, no I don't know. No. Like uh, back on the market, fiance. She's no <laughs> longer a fiance. Yeah, yeah, she's no longer pre-widowed. Or, uh, the yeah. recently single yeah. other girl, Ruby. Yeah, she's uh, recently de-fianced. Right. Or <laughs> unfinanced. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Refinanced. Recently single. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he give, he ends up giving her like his uh, his medal. The, the metal that would have gone to her yeah. her future fiance. Yeah, assume it's like a purple heart, but yeah, yeah. whatever the dedicable. So now is. every guy who her dates her future husband. Yeah, right? and so now every guy that dates her can be like, oh, what what did your oh what happened with your ex? Well, let me tell you. Yeah. Here, he let died. me show you this medal of honor that he, he died earned. a hero for the police. <laughs> anyway, yeah. what do you do? Uh, he was part of a strike force for yeah. this little place called I don't know China. China. <laughs> China. So, so, like, what kind of graphic design do you do? <laughs> right. I, I do very dangerous graphic design. <laughs> There's lots of bullets. Yeah. It is is the most dangerous. Ooh, executive uh, consulting. Oh, wow. Yeah. You must get your hands really dirty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but so, she, she's she gone, and then uh, as he's waiting at the airport, then, of course, uh, Narco shows up, and they get sassy with each other for a little bit, yep. and then they walk off hand in hand, and... Arm in arm, the and end. Tongue in tongue, and yeah, cheek to cheek. Yeah, it tongue is and butt. Heavily implied that they will have sex later. Yes. The wait, they are. <laughs> I think so. Huh. That's what folks do sometimes. This is weird. Sometimes yeah. folks want to stick their tongues into other folks. Yeah. The subtext told me. Did it? Those people might have sex later. The supertext told me that as well. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's China Strike Force. Yeah. All right, and then usually, as I as I described at the top of the episode, we usually give ratings. We yeah, do. that's, that's yeah. the part we, we, that we do now. Right. Um, if you can't tell, this is a good bad movie. Right. As in Robot Jocks. Yeah. Um, an enjoyable bags bad movie. will not be an issue here. Uh, the only question now is how many of the positive jocks. Uh, I can go. Okay. I am going to go four jocks. Stunts, fuck yes, five jocks all the way. It's not the entire movie, so it only gets four jocks. Because I just like, there's just too much repetitive Coolio and Mark Dacascos just hanging out, doing jack shit. Talking about the thing that they're going to do, and then they don't do it for three-fourths of the movie. And that's kind of lame to me. But aside from that, I mean... The, these stunts, it, like, like I said at the, at the top, this is our shit. Like, stuff where it seems like stuntmen gave their lives for this movie, that's our shit right there. Mm-hmm. And It's B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Yeah, all that, it gets four jocks from me. This movie is like, I don't know, 74 minutes long? Just a guess. I don't know. It's, yeah. Letterboxd says 93, but I don't believe I it. Don't, I don't or 92. believe it. I, I, yeah, I don't believe it either. Uh, although that might be close to correct. We started mm-hmm. around 6.30 and finished yeah. around 8. But um, there's like a 45-minute 45 45 cut, cut of this movie somewhere that is fucking incredible and the best thing you've ever seen stunts. in your entire life. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't... The stunt rock version. Right. It doesn't waste any time with Coolio. Um, I don't know if this proves out or helps prove out the Coolio principle, but he doesn't make it better even though he's mildly entertaining at times. Yeah. I don't know. It, he definitely makes it worse. But he he's not... 
I just love that they call him Coolio. Yeah, I do kind of love that. <laughs> it's so dumb. But there's a bunch of there's a bunch of waste in this, and I am teetering towards a three, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a three because it's. I think it misses like greatness by too many, literally too many jocks. Um, mm-hmm. But just Coolio is grating enough, and and the interstitial portions that aren't stunts, I just can't get into. The dubbing is really not good. I mean, that's what's uh, weird is when it is dubbing. Sometimes some people are, are their own selves when yeah. maybe they shouldn't be. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, like uh, Uncle Ma shouldn't shouldn't probably be his own voice. It's weird because some of his deliveries are great and perfectly understandable, and some of them are yeah through a very thick accent. Yeah, yeah. And then a lot of the stuff is that's dubbed. It's obvious they're saying English words, like the actor is saying English, but they do a poor job of dubbing over it. Like I, it's two thousand. We've figured out how to do this. Yeah we could do it a lot better. Um, so a lot of that just kind of kicks this movie around and, and takes, takes a couple jocks away. I, I, I want to give it four jocks, but it, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. I think even a 15, like a 15 minute less. So like, I don't know, 75 minute version Mm -hmm. instead of a 60 minute version of this movie is in fucking credible. Yeah, I mean, I I, I want to give it three jocks. I I want to give it four jocks, but unfortunately, I've got to give it five. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck both of y'all. Fair. There it is. Um. Yeah. No, this is my shit. It's a very strange split for us. This is my shit right here. One hundred percent. I don't. On, as far as I'm concerned, this completely disproves the Coolio principle. I mean, this is honestly, this is like finding Bigfoot, sort of. Um, <laughs> a little bit. I mean, to a lesser degree. Um, cause like Bigfoot could be anywhere, but it's probably nowhere. Um, the films of Coolio were always out there. I, I could have watched them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really just on me is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not a very good Squatch hunter. <laughs> uh, you're not very squatchy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I it, Nothing that happens that isn't the fighting annoys me enough that it, doesn't make the fighting some of the best fighting I've seen in a movie that doesn't have the aforementioned Jackie Chan's mm-hmm. or Jet Li's or yeah. Donnie Yen's or I mean even Bruce Lee even when they made three and a half movies. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's just yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fucking great and I I dug it a lot and um, yeah I mean the, the story's a little bit of a mess and it's it's a little strange to be like to have a have a story dive as close as this one does with all of the sexy time stuff to have basically no nudity other than some obfuscated breasts at the fashion yeah. show. Yep. You know, I'm just saying like, this is, this is, this is like such an R rated movie. I mean, Coolio drops a motherfucker. I think at one point, not, I mean, he might drop yeah. a motherfucker, but he, he says one too. Uh, but yeah, so I just saying it's, it's a little strange to like have that vibe of a movie and have it come so close and have such a thing of like, Oh, they're sexy, sexy time, and it's just mm. like, look, you got some side boob on Noriko. And yeah, that, that's enough, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying it's to be. Weird. I'm not trying to be a pig. It's just, it's always very strange when it's like you have a movie that's in this realm, and it's just like, yeah, but we got to make it PG-13. And it's like, yeah, yeah, but you didn't. Yeah. Like, you also, at the same <laughs> time, you, you it, didn't, guys. You know. Um. So anyway, but yeah, I, I, I liked it. I liked all the stuff, especially the fighting bits and the stunt bits more yeah. than more than the talkie bits but the talkie bits didn't annoy me enough to it is a great stunt spectacular i yeah i mean i haven't like i said i have not seen a stunt spectacular like this in a while it's probably since like the raid 2 honestly or yeah. possibly like the night comes for us or one of those I mean, that's not the right name but one of those yeah, one of the other eco ways movies or whatever yeah anyway yeah it's, it's good yeah it's good i'm glad we picked it absolutely yeah and, uh, Norika did the voice for Fiona uh, in Shrek One and Two's Japanese version, Japanese dubbed version. Well, that's you, good to know. If you want a weird piece of trivia, okay. Uh, get on IMDb. 
I think that's probably that's where you got it from. Yeah. I'm guessing. Was it in the trivia? No, not not in this movie. You need to add it to the trivia. I'll find a way to to wrap it. You were just wrap it. Back. It's just listed in the credits. <laughs> it's just listed credits. in her in her credits. Sure. I was closing the tab. Oh, that'd be great, Donkey. Man, I mean, I just figured you guys. I mean, to hi, oh, thank you, hi, another, Donkey. Another Norica fact. Also, by the way, there is there is. You one, are now subscribed to Norica facts. There is one uh, really good joke in this. So, like. We 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 talked oh, about, yeah. yeah. There's we talked a lot about like uh Mark Dacascos and Coolio's weird racist banter back and forth. Um and like it's 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 played very strangely where like you feel like at any point Mark Dacascos is just gonna be sick of his shit and kill him. Yeah. Because he keeps giving him looks like I'm tired of you saying things like you people and you know, not understanding the difference between Japanese and Chinese and blah blah blah, any number of things he said. Um but yeah, there's there's something where they have like sort of reconciliation at the end, and I'm pretty sure he says like "shushu," which is like you know like "thank you," mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and Pulio's just like "yeah, bullshit to you too" or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or "shishi." Well, I, yeah. there's also uh, we talked about how the assassin got away, mm-hmm. and when he comes back and and he he meets up with Coolio and Mark Dacascos, oh, right, right, he goes, right. he goes, "Yeah, man, well you're good, get out of here," and he's like, uh, "I need my money first, and then I'll go." I think he specifically like, says bread, which yeah, is probably bad. But. I need my bread. And Coolio just goes, you want bread? Go see a baker. Blam. And then, blam, <laughs> kills him. Yep. Yeah. And he's like, he wanted to see China. He saw China. Now he's going back by sea or water yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Because he shoots him and he goes in the water. But yeah. It's not a well-written movie. Yeah, no, it's, that one's, I mean, because at least I, I, I kind of clap because at least always a like proper one-liner, at least an attempt at it mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah. We haven't really had anyone attempt that in a while. But no, that I I really like the, <laughs> the just the yeah bullshit to you too. <laughs> it's just like I don't know. It's just funny. It's one of the full, one of the things that Cleo yeah. said that was actually funny to me. Yep. Anywho, but yes, that is China Strike Force. Well, we got one official episode left. Yeah, yep. I mean, you know, and we got one mailbag episode left. I was going to say um, it's kind of like your last time for contact information, really. Yeah, I mean, this is it, dude. Do you, I mean, like, so I'm just, I'm not trying to like put. Oh, you I in gotta, the spot. I gotta sit up and dig deep, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is your last contact information. Yeah, and because I mean, I don't figure there's any point. If in you guys, it. yeah, want to keep talking, I'll never do it. Okay. <laughs> you can never do it. Okay. No, go ahead and do it. You should do it. No. No, I don't want to, no. And people people should do it. People should do what you're about to tell them to do. If you'd like to email the BAMFcast, contact us at bmf at bmfcast.com. Or, if you'd like to call in, dial 910-5JOCKS-BMF or 910-556-9263 on your telephone, cellular or otherwise. And if you'd like to join us in the Discord, where we have... Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 24-7 discussions about all the things that you love about the BAMFcast and otherwise. Send us an email and ask for a Discord invite. Yep. But please, get in contact with us, because this is your last chance. (laughs) The last chance you have to save a life. And the life you save could be your own. Yeah, you may pay for the entire seat, but you'll only need the edge. (laughs) And if you don't want it to be read on air and you just want to tell us something privately, just say that in the email and we won't read it on air. Yep. We, it will it will stay amongst us. Yeah. And if you'd like a written transcript might, of the podcast, learn to write really fast. We might share it with Truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite jokes ever. <laughs> Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to... I'm not giving you any of the addresses for us. Nope. Don't do it. Yeah, it's I can six, give it, you the old address. It's 1600 address. Pennsylvania Avenue. Right. Probably don't send whatever you would send us to 1600. No, no. You will get on a watch list, and it won't be good. So take a letter, Maria. Address it to my wife. <laughs> I thought I made the oldest references this, <laughs> this episode. <laughs> Jesus. What's that from, the 60s? Uh, 1969, give or take. Or, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's 60 anyway, or 69 is going right on there. You got basically two weeks left to uh, to get your correspondence in mm-hmm. and have it be read on air. You have the rest of the existence of uh, Gmail and or bmfcast.com to send in other correspondence, but we can't guarantee that it will make it into podcast form. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. We may do a reunion in like five years. Yeah, exclusively yeah, on, we'll on Max. Yeah. <laughs> no, Peacock. That's what we're going to be on. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. us on the cock. Yeah. <laughs> Streaming exclusively yeah. on the cock. Yeah. Bathcast reunion. Can't wait to be on the cock. <laughs> On the cock again. <laughs> I just can't wait to be on the cock again. Oh, man. There's your sound bite. Be anyway. MFN with my friends. So let's, uh, let's get out of here, yeah. shall we? Okay. I'm Harlow. I'm Mackie. I'm BJ. And this is Bamcast Out. See you soon. One last time, let us know if the Lamborghini Countach is cool or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, include your age. Yeah. Show your. Okay, yeah, that's what you really need to do. Is write in. <laughs> I didn't mean for it tell to be us in, the in ages a... of the people that you have shown the Countach to. Yeah. And what their reactions. I are. didn't know this was going to be an entire attack on the entire Lamborghini brand. I thought I was just going specifically after the Countach because, like, I'm not going to lie, the Murcielago is fucking beautiful i still love that oh the car. mercy oh fuck. Yeah. that is yeah, one is. of the one of most gorgeous. i mean i think that's the thing is like when i saw that they could do better that that also made the countach look uglier well the diablo <laughs> that came after the countach like holy fuck. yeah yeah it was like it was like oh we made the countach but it works and maybe the engine isn't on mm-hmm. your neck um and then uh, yeah so the diablo mercy lago the Huracan. Huracan. Um, there's the one that I don't really care about, but sold, like, is Lamborghini's highest seller. The Gallardo. Oh, yeah. The Gallardo I don't like because it's the boring Lamborghini, but it's their highest selling car ever. Uh, and then the Aventador. Oh, my fucking God. The Aventador is an incredible looking car. Yeah. Holy yeah. fuck. I mean, not not just because of its, uh, you know, Batman connections and the best Batman movie ever, but yeah, that black Murcielago he drives up and I think was the first time I'd ever seen one. Yeah. And it was like, you know, again, remember when I talk about that movie, I went in that movie forgetting I was, I forgot I was watching a Batman movie until the <laughs> last like 20 minutes of that movie. That's what was amazing about that movie. Yeah. Uh, and I, anyway, I stopped talking about that. But, but when that car showed up, I was just like, fucking shit, that is the one of the, one of the most gorgeous things I've yeah. ever seen. That's so that's the thing about the Lamborghini versus Ferrari debate mm-hmm. for me. A Lamborghini every time I see a new one I go, "Oh, fuck." And something happens inside of me. Yeah. Um except for the Ferrari La Ferrari La Ferrari that thing is gorgeous. I yeah. love that thing. But that's how I know like a car has captured my, you know, has captured my heart and imagination is when I look at it and I go, "Ooh." Mm-hmm. And that's every new, every it new. Touches Lamborghini. me in the cockles of my heart. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe in the subcockle, the, <laughs> the peacockles, um, and not really any of the Ferraris do that for me. I, not really any other cars do that for me, except for occasionally I'll see a like a old Alpha or something that mm-hmm. takes my breath away. And we're back to Miles Teller. It is all full circle. It do be like that sometimes. It do. All right. Wow, 9.58. Yeah. Ding! Wrapping up early. Yeah. So I have something to discuss for the mailbag episode. Offline? Yes. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. So thank you for coming, everyone. Um, Now get the fuck out. Thank you for breathing hard. Yeah. I appreciate you guys all being in the stream. Uh I guess you got two more. Because we are we will broadcast the stream, right? The mailbag one. Sure. Why yeah, not? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I was gonna say, why would we not? Because we, for all we know, we might get live interaction. Yeah. 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 We could yeah. have somebody call in live. No, uh, no you couldn't really. Uh, not really. We could. Well, I mean, I mean, if we wanted to. Well, if we could, yeah, if they couldn't, like, just do it on the rando. <laughs> no, not on the Garfield phone, but maybe. No, we I'm can. just saying on the rando because like, I'd have to fire up some kind of you know. Oh yeah. Skype. Wipe. Wipe. No. Service. I'm just trying to draw in viewers. That's all. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. We also have a history of taking off our shirts. We could. The Lord could visit us. Yeah. It could be the fucking rapture. You don't know that. <laughs> you better watch yeah, just in I, case. I just mean, in case. Right, we might just be like, I the guarantee you, if there's a rapture, the three of us will still be here, just <laughs> right. continuing the. We won't even know. Well, it that's could, why. That's guess how what? I'll, it's already happened. That's how. Guess all, where we are? Right, fucking here. Still. But that's how all of our viewers will be able to watch it with us. Yeah, is because that's true. they also will not be raptured. Mm-hmm. They will be here. Yeah, like 
good little heathen boys and girls. Yeah, forget those like biblical horns. I just give you the John Cena ones every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. pretty sure I heard it All sometime in 2016. Yeah. Is huh. mm. it like a brown note? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. that's why it's so shitty. Here. It's a brown note from the Lord. Yeah. All uh, right. Well, after that revelation, let's get out of here. Shall Let we? us loggeth off. All right. Good night, Good night. everyone. Uh, loggeth off, so saith yeah. the Lord. I am become podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Putteth 